uh, to review the prioritization process. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pam yep. and her staff. Absolutely. For Thank you. And this is for the next trip. This is for the next draft of the project. For the next draft, yes, the 27 to 32, if you can believe it. Good grief. Yes. So if we could have next slide, please. Thank you. Okay. So like Jared said, we're going to be uh, speaking on the remaining three prioritization criteria today. And, and as always, since this is an open forum, we do have public comment at the end. I would just say if everyone um, online, if they can just make sure that they mute themselves um, just so uh, there is no background noise. So thank you for that. Next slide, please. So we start out uh, again, all of our Dell dot presentations with our mission, every trip, every mood, every dollar, and everyone. And that can't be more emphasized with talking specifically about the, the CTP prioritization. Next slide, please. And again, also our secretary has um, wanted to highlight the, um, you know, the bring so the statistics to make sure that everyone is aware and informed of the fatalities on our road today. So for, as of Monday, uh, we had we have had 107. Uh, this year it is down slightly from this time last year, but as you can tell, our most vulnerable uh, population, pedestrians, motorcyclists, um, and, and, and thank, thankfully not bicyclists, but have been on the uptick. Um, and that other person type, we have, we have just recently started reporting on this. Um, so other person type would be things like pe people being on a Scooter, 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 or we have had um, incidences of people not being in a, a vehicle, like a. I think we had a run off the road and somebody hit a house, and unfortunately, somebody died in that house. So um, that we did just want to make sure that we were reporting on that as well. So. Um, I'm, yeah, and yeah, so that is that. Um, and then we also always want, and thank you so much for our council do, doing the pledge to be a, be Delaware towards zero death. So thank you, all of you, for signing that. I think but, not, not the last okay, time. Before you go on. That. Is there a way, because I think this would help some of the council members and maybe mm -hmm. the general public to, to justify some of the pedestrian safety improvements you're doing, is to separate the pedestrians out from those that are in a, a, a standard protected sidewalk versus somebody crossing mid-block or in areas that are, are considered dangerous. And I still think some of that's going on. I know you're doing a lot of things to improve that. Uh, U.S. Route 13 and the... And the um, the Newcastle area yeah, for the uh, is medium. the medium barriers, you know, the fences, things like that. So I think it'd be nice to know that because I think that's a, that's a way to help support those types of things for the general public and say, why are you doing this? It's because sure. here's how many of the pedestrian accidents are related to people crossing in the wrong locations. Yeah, that, uh, granted, that's human. That's something humans making a bad decision. But if you make that harder for them to make that bad decision, I think it'll be leave you better in general. Yeah. Sure, that, that makes sense. Yeah, let us talk to Pete and Scott from our safety section and see if we can break those out. Um, and then, yes, we are trying to, as you said, holistically from the Fed's safe system approach, you know, knowing that all humans are vulnerable and they make mistakes and just trying to, um, to account for that as best we can with those types of projects, but yeah, and trying to funnel them to a safe 
policy. Sure, but we, we can't do that everywhere, unfortunately. If I may. Of course. Uh, there's also the, uh, as you know, last, I think it was George, last year, George, the I'm state sorry. rolled out. George, the, I'm sorry, can you just identify your- Sure, George Lee, so Department of Justice, um, counsel for the council, but I also wanted to mention, uh, there is actually also the, the uh, Homeland Security website that now tracks all the crash data. It is about six months out of date because it takes six months for them to upload the data, but it is a searchable database that you can actually search based upon collision type. So you can search, I believe, involving pedestrian, and then it'll tell you where all the pedestrian fatalities occurred. And then you can see what's the uh, type of facility is there, whether it's a controlled intersection, whether it's a cross crosswalk, signalized intersection for pedestrians, or if it was unfortunately a jaywalk. But a lot of that data is actually already available as well. So yeah, I think it's just it, it's just a way for the department to help justify when we're starting to do all these things. And if they're, if the general public and we go out to the map cut all these things, you can say, okay, here's why there's been. In this quarter here over the last three years, there's been 16 pedestrian issues with several deaths all related to jaywalking. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, just to George's point, we do have the pedestrian action uh, plan that also has a, a fair amount like based on that data and stuff from the pedestrian deaths of heat maps. There's actually heat maps per county that identify the high risk corridors that we, we could drill down into and uh, but that's more of a ho holistic approach but I do understand you the sp uh, being specifically so what you're sp saying is specifically associated with this weekly map okay great okay and gotcha. Bobby Pfeiffer joined us so Perfect. we have five of us in the room excellent thanks so much for joining Mr. Pfeiffer Sorry to disrupt. Oh, no, please. We love to hear <coughs> suggestions and improvements. So thank you. All right, next slide, please. So we are going that the main purpose of this meeting, well, really the only one, is uh, the priority process update. Oh, and, and just wanted to update that, talking about pets. October is pedestrian safety month, so just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that and wear highly visible clothing. We can, um, we have be Delaware vests if anybody wants them to walk around their neighborhood or, uh, or anywhere else. So happy to provide those to the council. Okay, next slide, please. So just a reminder, um, we are analyzing the seven factors, what the goals were, mainly though we are going from a 73-ish per percent quantitative to a 100 per percent quantitative, keeping in line with the um, with the local and national transportation goals um, listed on the right, right hand side of that slide. So we have gone over safety, we've gone over equity, we've gone over um, environment. What was the last one? Oh, multimodal. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to be focusing today on system operating effectiveness, state and local priority, and the economic impact. So first one up is the uh, system operating effectiveness. Next slide, please. Thank you. So right now we have a 19.10 uh, uh, um, percentage for the current priority station. Um, and that's broken out at about 12% for congestion management analysis, 6.2% for what the existing congestion is. Um, so we are proposing a possible um, slight decrease in 
this just that, you know, because we have to get to 100 per, per cent. So there are some tweaks here. Um, so we are looking at an even distribution. So we're going to keep the first two. Um, the, that was those sub factors would stay the same, but then we also have our um, top plan. So our traffic operations management plan. So each county has one of those um, and they do an overall uh, congestion management, like state of affairs as to what's going on in the county. Um, and we all also, to an extent, um, looking at the, now that comp plan, Anson, is that comprehensive yes, plan? Yes, uh, the local okay. comprehensive Yeah, so, so, so the lo local comprehensive plans, looking at the land use. And to that end, that would roll into a new sub-factor, which would be recent and projected growth. So let me let me let me put on my reading glasses so I can um, so I can speak to this a bit more effectively. Um, and then uh, and I will tell Anson that if I am saying anything incorrect, please interrupt me, Anson. Um, yes. So we're so looking at the recent growth that uh, that factor would end up being looking at the last three years of building permits. So seeing where the local growth is, um, where it is being, and, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Liz, can you go to the next slide? Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So looking really at where the high and medium growth is, where the forecasting is based on uh, not only the three, the last three years of released building permits, but also looking at the, the most recent census track. So that is, we are, we kind of broke them out into no growth, low growth, medium and high. Just, and, and as, as you can see in that map, that very dark red, and we're just doing it, for instance, for the South. Um, so that would be a area where a project would get some more points. If it is, if that project is geographically located in those growth areas. Um, let me just say, oh, okay, so that's the recent growth part. The future growth part would, would be based on the current Dell dot travel demand um, model. So we use this very robust, very powerful travel demand model and look at regional growth, where people are, where people are, where they're going. And we project out 20, 30, 30 years. years. Thank you. Into the future. So that ends up being, um, so what we, we have done is that if there's very low growth, then it, it would receive no points. If it was medium growth, it would re receive about a third, um, third of the a third of the points. Yeah, uh, Thirty-three percent. Third, 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 third. Okay, so thank you. Third, thirty-three percent. High, high, high growth. It would be sixty-seven percent, and then very high growth. It would be the the full hundred. Percent. So, just trying to try, uh, trying to quantitatively put projects in areas that have very high 
programs um, due to that need. Now, I know that there, you know, that is a complementary to the developer growth because obviously relating to building permits and the census, I mean, uh, obviously the higher census, the higher population census tracts are obviously going to be the higher development um, <coughs> trends. So trying to, but as part of the development process, they are, do, they have, that the, the developers have impacts and they have, and they're required to do mitigation for those impacts, but there's only so much of a reach that the developers are required to do. So this kind of helps fill the gaps in to some more long range planning. So that was a lot. Um, and then if you can go to the next slide. So this is just like what we have been doing for each of the factors, looking at specifically the projects that were put in to the CTP this last round. So the orange was the current prioritization ranking. Um, and then the green would be the new proposed so that the council and the public could see some comparisons. So uh, what the main comparison is, is that the, the, the projects in the south around two thirds of them or so got, got bumped up a bit in the rankings. Um, not by a whole heck of a lot, but by some. So just wanted to kind of open it up to the council for discussion or questions that probably Anson will be able to answer. So in the projected growth, mm -hmm. that's I'm assuming that's something that's constant in the model is constantly being adjusted. The reason I'm asking the question is, you know, the state now has a affordable housing task force. Mm -hmm. and I think there's going to be several of the local governments who are going to be looking into that, which might uh, but building permits aren't there and there might not even be plans yet, but there are going to be changes some of how some of that growth occurs. Cause I think that's the only way they're going to be able to address affordable housing is create density is in the areas uh, okay. that may be on the peripheral of the investment levels, mm -hmm. uh, maybe be in a investment level three versus one or two yes. because they got to find land to be able to make those things happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and We'll, uh, we, we can talk a bit more about that, you know, that the state strategies on that. Yep. But, one, but your model will constantly update based it does, on input. Like it, yeah. That's the great part about it is that that my, my thought, you know, we're all, we're all using the same thing. So the, 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 the traffic, the travel demand model is used for, a lot of things. It's it's done for de developer projects. It's used for TIDs. It's used for the like CTP projects. Once it's been you know uh, well, once it's ready ready to start project de development, the the the, the uh, engineers ask us for what, what that A A D T projection is, and it's all based on that model. Yeah, Anthony, you want to chime in? Yeah, Ted, yes. Uh, that's a great question uh, because we, we as- Do you mind just speaking up just a bit, Anthony? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, you know, Pam could also say that we, we've been involved in the housing mobility task force that we were very closely with state planning to, and we included the impact. And I will also provide some background information that because of you might have heard of we have a Delaware population can can I can 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 I sort him? You know, they constantly update the population and employment forecast. And we work very closely with them. And our number, you know, population forecast and you know, is consistent with that because based on state law, we have to be consistent with that. So we are constantly updated, and I can tell that from that model, um, by the end of the year. And we work with finance and 
and con construction. So whenever a project is finished, open for traffic, and it's all going to add to the model. So, so for your information, we do constantly update that to the latest. Okay. That's what I figured. Yeah. We also have the, those building permit data really come from state planning. So they do track all the building permit throughout the whole state to make sure that we have the latest information. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, Marty. Um, I had a bit of a concern with the reduction, the percentage reduction. Okay. You said it was slight, but overall, if it was 19% to 15, that's a pretty big reduction. Sure. And I think operating effectiveness is one of the primary places that Dell Dot affects our customers. Okay. So, what was the logic for reducing? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so I think, um, and Anton, correct me if I'm wrong. So we kept safety the same percent, right? But we bumped up, did, did we bump up the EJ, yes, the, the yeah. social and the, and the multimodal. And the multimodal. So we bumped yes. those. Multimodal went down also. Well, I'm sorry, the, the environmental justice. We, we and then we went up a bit on, um, that went down, but resiliency went yeah, up. Yeah, the resiliency went up. So yeah, hundred uh, percent. I I think that this. I think from an overall like, I think that the plan or what I would like to see is that you know having this conversation on all of these factors. But then in December, when we you know have kind of sussed out. If we just say, for instance, if we leave this at 15% now, when we go to December, we will be looking at all of the factors. So we'll do the same, the same chart with, because right now you're only looking at what the ch changes are for that system. For that operating. single factor yes. in this. Correct. Uh, but when in December, I'm going to have Anson do what the factors were from the existing to all the new ones. And then I think that we can tweak that, like if there is a, a desire to say, well, we don't think that it should be 15, we think it should be 17, or we think it should be 192, then, then, we, then that would be a conversation with the council to see if we want to bump that up, what's going to be brought down. Yep. Make sense? Sound good? Yes, because we're definitely not finalizing it until February. So, so we, we can, yes, yeah, so we're on this like journey. We're on this journey to like get to the end. So, but that's a great, great uh, points. So, okay. So next one, we're going to talk about state and local priority. So this, um, the, the, the big change here, um, even though it is not a big, uh, percentage change, but what we did was change up, um, was change up level four, four so this five. yeah so well four and five so the state strategies um and if you want to go to the next slide anyway yeah um so right now currently you get about two percent if you're in partial one one two three and four what we propose and, you know, uh, 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 obviously full, you know, well, want to talk about this is the proposal to make both four and five zero and not just five being zero, trying to really put more focus on where the suit date is is wanting to to keep growth. now it's not to say that a developer can't develop in four um but it's it's just from a ctp 
ranking standpoint, so, so um, just to kind of better align. And um, so, so with that being said, when you look at the rankings, so if you can go to the next slide, please. So when you go to the rankings, you can see that there is a, a fair amount of movement. Um, so the ones that like, so the blue ones are the ones that decreased on the ranking and the pinky kind of salmon ones are the ones that, that went up in the rankings. So that is really focusing on the projects that are in one, two, and three, and like less of a priority uh, on the four and, and well, no, no priority based on the strategies. Now, that being said, there would, they, the, those projects could still get points from the local MPOs and the counties saying that they want that. So it is a, um, a bit of a tweak from 6.2 to five, uh, just kind of wanted to get the council's thoughts on it. Well, I like the idea of concentrating much of the rankings based on decimal level one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. uh, in the development world, if you go outside of that, uh, there's a lot of uh, pushback, either from the Office of State Planning or the local planning agencies. Um, and you're probably, so with development being targeted one, two, and three, there's going to be probably, I'm speaking from as a, how I see it happening, is more opportunity that might be where there's going to be developer contributions into some of those road improvements. Very true. Yes. That makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but it, 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 it'll be interesting to see when we do the full comparison as to how that plays out. So, um, okay. Well, if no one online has any uh, other add-ons, we will move right along and go to economic development jobs and offers. So this is one of the ones where um, we were proposing to uptake the percentage. I think when we first started this process, um, there might have been some thoughts about possibly bumping up. So we um, not, so all of the sub factors are the same, but we were going to include a fifth one in to the new, and that would be located near a freight uh, by, uh, by head on next. So as you guys are all aware, uh, you know, we have had a, a big uptick in the warehousing, um, uh, what's the called, where, housing demographic, I shall say, um, and that has local MPOs and the counties on um, not only like our state freight plans, since, since we are required by that by the feds to have a state uh, freight plan, but also looking into um, or, or working on local freight plans. So, so um, well, MAPCO and Dan um, have done a lot of work in this area, Maryland from D D D D D and MPO. So this is very much a hot, not a hot topic, but of growing concern. Plus with the expansion of the port. Um, so that is uh, something that we just wanna make sure that 
all of the sub factors are taking into account as much as possible what the growing trends are in Delaware. Um, so I didn't know if, Anton, do you want to just, um, do you mind just explaining it a bit like what the freight bo bo bottleneck is? Yes. Um, actually, though, according to the latest federal guideline in our freight plan, we need to identify what the freight bottlenecks are. And it's all based on our freight plan. And to this our freight plan, there is a map and a list of location for its freight bottleneck. And sometimes it could be eligible for the future of you know, grant money for freight, which is important. And these are being identified. And the way that we approach this is that we have identified them and for intersection, as you know, that having corridor is more. It's easier to rent a corridor than a rent intersection. And what we did is that, uh, last month, we, we brought this concept to the freight working group. They like it, and we have a brief discussion about it. And for intersection project, we draw a one mile free this year, you know, for the freight, that doesn't have freight impact. And another key point, which is important because uh, freight is also a mode of transportation people don't talk about. And this is a critical mode too, at least from our point of view. And especially with Amazon, the last mile delivery, and, and I also kind of ex expanded the freight network. I also like included the last mile just as well. Because if you identify the last mile, you also get some points too. And so that's, uh, I, we feel like that is quite critical for the, for the future, but for the freight bottleneck, and we'll constantly update our freight bottleneck. Here's corner is a perfect example that happened. It, it may rent low in the recent growth area, but it's rent high in safety and freight too, because it's happened to be on the freight route, as well as also identifies the freight bottleneck. So I don't know if this is some background information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think it, you'll be able if we go to the not the next slide, but the slide after before, that. Before you go to that, yeah. the TIDs. Yes. Okay. I know there's several across the state. Are they concentrated more in Sussex County? I think you adopted more in Sussex County, but I'm sure where they're concentrated. But one I guess I'm really concerned about is where the freight on the issue is the port area. I'm not aware of the port area, the Route 9 quarter, any of that in a TID. So therefore, are they going to get penalized for a project in that area to help address that because it's not going to be in a TID? Or how are we going to identify that? Or are we going to try to adopt a TID for the, uh, the Route 9 or the, the corridor Route 9 and not, not to Governor Prince to, you know, to the uh, North Port? Yes, yeah, that, that's a very good question. So the, the located in the TID, that's a separate sub factor than being in the free bot, bot, bottom I, I understand I understand that yeah. but if if but those are the those are the five factors that are going to that 15 percent mm -hmm. so if a project is in a freight quarter area it's going to get let's say it's going to get one three uh, it'll get the non-federal contribution two percent and economic impact five percent but it's going to get zero for the TID so sure. therefore it's it's ranking against some other project that might meet all those that not necessarily be where the most critical is. Sure. Yes. So, so that's my concern. Because I, I know there's not that many TIDs in Newcastle County, especially yeah. above the canal. Yeah, well, well, there actually is. So there's there's 14 uh, t total. So there's says there is half of them are in operation and half of them are in under development. So, so we do have the, the big one that we're working on in up north is churchmans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is a, uh, a, a very large um, one, but like oh, no. the TIDs up north are much more established than the, you know, because obviously that is a lot of the congestion, the urbanization and the growth. So I think, I don't know if it's, it's definitely not an apples to apples being that like it, yeah, I mean, you probably get very high ranking on this if you were in a T TID and the free bottleneck. It's trying to trying to like have a, a as fair as we can be to a lot of 
Understood. different projects. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I, this is a challenge. It's not easy. I said, no, like, I, 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 I understand. Each other, yeah. But no. we try to be as comprehensive as possible. Yeah. yeah. I understand. I mean, I appreciate it going to 15% because if you remember when we adopted the prioritization process the first time around, uh, another member and I pushed higher for oh, economic gotcha. development uh, because we, we were both of the opinion that the economic development would help drive other programs throughout the state, not just the transportation side. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. So do, do you propose any changes? Do you no, think no. that there's I'm, a, I'm okay with 15%. When, okay. You start, when we start thinking about the rest of them on the backside here, gotcha. okay, the resiliency, uh, automotive, yeah, and, sure. and the environmental justice side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, that, that's their so there's got to be a balance. So I'm, exactly. I'm okay with the 15, at least my opinion, I'm okay with the 15%. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, yeah, 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 so specifically, if we go um, to the, not the next slide, I don't know. Yes, to that slide. So we are looking at, um, so there was not a whole lot of changes specifically for this type criteria um there weren't a whole a whole lot of shifts um but it is interesting to see that um that the ones so the hudson red and road all of um and, and the, um are just in a not free not mm -hmm. tid you know yeah. type of thing yeah, I would so, Kind of say that the US 9 is, of course, it's kind of TID, it's kind of in TID, but it's also a freight to route too. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's really close to a freight bottleneck area, which is, you know, I point to. So, so yeah. there's a lot of factors here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, it'll be it'll be very interesting i'll be very curious to see when we combine yeah. all of them like what's the, how, sensitiv what's the sensitivity yeah. occurs sure. once you've got all of the all the pieces and then throw it in against the projects exactly yep yeah i think, I think it's going to be so so the next slide is just we you've we, seen this time, timeline before but just a reminder when you're not uh, we've talked about those three criteria in December at our normal COT meeting, we'll have the sec secretary's update, but then, then we'll talk, be comparing all of the criteria. We'll have some talks on um, if any of the numbers ha have to be changed. It's, it's good, at least for us, that, you know, we can, we, that we have the determination of using the sub fat factor so like the, the the where the information is coming from that's like half of the bahida, 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 bahida for us like tweaking the numbers and stuff we can do that easily um and then so we'll we'll speak about that in december and then we will finalize and vote on, on it in our regular one inch February. And then the great thing is, is that it just lines up perfectly because we then have the call for projects um, for, for the next CTP. So, yeah. So with that, I will turn it over to, 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 uh, back to the chair. Uh, first off, uh, Bobby, either you or Marty have any questions or comments? I have none. Yeah, I, I, my guess is that we'll all, once we can see yes. when all the ranking pieces, all the components are put into it and then see how it compares to what the yep. previous projects were. Exactly. My guess is we're not going to see a, a huge movement, mm -hmm. but I think there will be some projects. So, and I just think at that point in time, uh, if we're okay with, I think you, the department and uh, the secretary and everything like that would be the ones that have to justify this once it goes back out to the public. Sure. Uh, when you do your uh, meetings with the MPOs for next year or on the ranking of projects and everything. Yes. Sorry. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be great to see because uh, at least the ones with the big factors, the, the safety, the system of 
effectiveness since we are I, I, I hitting some we're doing some changes to the sub factors. We're trying to hone in a bit from that safety. We had a, a, a big discussion about the safety one. So it will be very interesting to see how those projects rank. Now the question for you, and this will come down to your uh, people that actually put the numbers together. Is there a way that once you come into the meeting in December and we have these, and we all say, let's say, <laughs> Marty convinces us that we should look at congestion and maybe bump it up 1% sure. and drop something else 1%. I'm assuming that inside that spreadsheet that you have that you can make that kind of adjustment while we're sitting here. Yes. It should be able to re-rank them for us. Yeah, <laughs> that will be a, like a working, yeah, that, that's going to be answered. So that's, that's, that's our game plan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I do that when I do thing. I mean, I'm, I'm doing a traffic analysis. I can, and if I just adjust this one half a percent here, it'll recalculate I know, right? again. So, yeah. 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 That, that, that's going to be the, the interesting thing that, to, to yeah. see that but, it really like the results are, are going to be what's immense. Yeah. You know, I think, I think it would be important if we, if we know if we can show that sensitivity. Absolutely. And let's say, like Marty said, let's make it, let's change it 1%. Yeah. Doesn't really change anything. Doesn't change it. Yeah. If it doesn't change anything, maybe we leave where we think where it is. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. pretty what that sensitivity is going to be. Yeah. So. yeah that's, that's how game plan we all we we yeah. that's what we have done in the past and definitely mm -hmm. yeah. that. I'll give the option to you. <laughs> yeah, just it's just to you know say, okay, yeah, the sensitivity of this thing is yeah, we can change a percent here, half percent there, mm -hmm. but overall the rankings aren't going to change. So let's just stay where we are. Yes. Very yes. I that that is awesome. That is the plan. That is the plan. And my guess is Anson probably already knows that answer. No, I don't. Know. <laughs> intuitively, intuitively, he can say, well, yes, I can't guarantee it. I'm not going to seal it. But intuitively, it tells me if I do this, it's not going to change anything here. No, I don't know. No. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. You might know more like two weeks be before the meeting. But <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Is there anybody else on the on the uh, the virtual side that might have any questions or comments? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this special meeting of the Council on Transportation. Second. Moved and seconded. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. And uh, you will send out uh, a calendar in or calendar thing to let us find out for the month of December. For the month of December. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Yeah, we'll, we'll coordinate with the secretary and, and everything on that. And she'll, she'll be providing her. Oh, yeah. Time. And we also need to coordinate with uh, Stephanie's school member. They may have an update. Yes, for the update. We may, we yeah. may, but we don't know yet. Yeah, I think we were going to have Sue, Def come back and uh, she was going to seek on the update for the equity. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. And equity tournament. Yeah. All right, and if nobody has any, anything else online, thank you so much for attending and have a great afternoon.